ladies and gentlemen, the show must go on, and it's been way too long since I've seen the inside of the historic Tampa Theater here on Franklin Street in downtown Tampa. Actually, today is the reopening of the theater. I've been waiting for this moment for so long, and I'm happy that we can all go inside together. I am so happy and excited. I've anticipated this moment right here for a long time. I've been waiting for this movie theater to reopen. And if you've been watching this channel for a long time, you understand my excitement right now. And you know how much I love the Tampa Theater. Almost a year to the day that it closed its doors because of the situation. And now for the first time, we are all able to walk inside those doors and see a film. And tonight they're playing a film called The Father, starring Anthony Hopkins. I have no idea what this film's about, and I really don't care. <laughs> it could have been any film that brought me out tonight, because whatever's playing at the Tampa Theater right now, that's the movie I want to see. And I'll give a review of that movie at the end of this video, at the end of this night. And I'm so happy you're joining me here, again, on this channel and here on Franklin Street. I will share the history of this beautiful theater once again, and I will document my experience on the reopening of the Tampa Theater. I am Tampa Jay, and there's much ahead. The Tampa Theater opened its doors in 1926. It is an original silent movie theater, or silent movie palace, as they called them back then. It opened its doors as a Paramount Theater, showing Paramount films up until 1948. Designed by architect John Everson, it is of the Mediterranean Opera House design. And John Everson designed many theaters across the United States. But it's said that this Tampa Theater was his absolute favorite. The Tampa Theater is actually the first ever air-conditioned building in all of Tampa. It's not every day you get to walk up to an original movie theater ticket booth and purchase a ticket to see a movie. But that that dream, that, that one, is alive and well here in downtown Tampa, Florida, once again. And I always enjoy doing that, but however, because of the situation, you have to pre-order your ticket online and have it in hand. And they will scan it right there as I did. 15 bucks to go inside for a night at the movies. Again, the ticket booth is closed, and beside the ticket booth right here in the old poster, display case. And check how old this is. Look at this. Don't see them like this every day, do you? But inside this poster, they have a little display of their safety guidelines. Six feet apart, say stars help Tampa Theater reopen safely. And there's all kinds of guidelines there. But it points out at the end that you are able to order your concessions at your seat, and then you're able to go pick them up. Now, um, early as always, as you can see, there is a gate right here. The main doors do not open until 6.45. The movie beginning at 7.30, but so cool to peek in here at the doors. The doors that we will be walking through momentarily. Check it out. Here's the, the hallway between the ticket booth and the main doors. Check out that chandelier and the detail on the ceiling. They don't make them like this anymore. And it looks like the media is out here, about ready to interview one of the members, one of the staff members of the Tampa Theater. The media also covering the story. And I'm covering the media, covering the story. Always lurking on the media. Just minutes away, I'm trying to capture the opening of the gates. And look, there's a temperature check going right over there. Couple of cameramen here from the local media. And I smell the aroma. Oh, oh my gosh. I smell the popcorn. I haven't smelled that in so long. It smells so good. A lot of build up here, but that's because I am not going to short myself of documenting the reopening night of the Tampa Theater. Nope. A little bit different. And I think here comes the gate. There we are. 
Tickets in hand and the line has begun moving. It has begun. Now I'm about to grab my temperature check. Hello? How's it going? Good, how are you? Good? Might have to pull that down. Okay. The mask. There we go. There we go. Yeah, yeah, I took it down. Oh, I got it? Yep, you're good. All right, oh my gosh, here we are. Oh, it's been over a year since I've been in here. In a few months. Oh, wow. Looks just as I remember it, too. Absolutely gorgeous in here. This is just the lobby. Just the lobby. I'm going to get some treats in a moment. I'm going to find a seat. We're going to explore a little bit. I'm going to find a seat and I'm going to try the mobile ordering. But first, let's explore. I see something different. We're not allowed to walk up the stairs here. That's a first. That's a first. But check out the staircase up there to the upper balcony. And notice the atmospheric architecture. It looks like we are under the night sky. Right there. That's so cool. But yes. Welcome to the Tampa Theater, my friends. Welcome. And I'd like to point out that this is a music stand that was here during the time of the opening, of the original opening of the theater back in 1926. The orchestra pit that sat in front of the stage played the soundtrack to the silent movies. And this is an original right there. That's where the orchestra, that's where they put their music on. That's a music stand. They're closed, but normally they do work. These water fountains are all over the Tampa Theater. Check them out. They do work, but not right now because of the situation. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome inside the theater. And it looks like a lot of the seats are marked off for social distancing purposes. I see banners striped over the seats. And it appears that the upstairs balcony will not be accessible tonight. Well, darn, that's one of my favorite places to sit, but I get it, but hopefully one day we are one step closer for the entire theater to open. There's still lots to see down here, including these old lamps. And also on the back wall, the old phone system that the ushers used to communicate up into the projection room or upstairs to the other ushers. Check it out. The receiver is still right there on the wall. At the top of the show, looking straight down, I'm going to walk down so you can look up into the theater. It's an awesome sight down there. As I'm walking to the front and we're looking at the carpet, I want to point out a few years ago, this theater was renovated. This is the original carpet pattern that was placed here in 1926. And also, the original seat pattern restored. It's a replication, but this is exactly what this theater looked like back in 1926. Now, if you're standing up in that balcony, you can see the top of the theater, but you get a pretty good view right now. But again, check out the atmospheric sky. It looks like kind of some Spanish tile up there, some Mediterranean. And there you go, check it out. Panning down, looking out at the stage. And over there, you see a square, an opening in the stage. That is where the Wurlitzer piano, or sorry, the world the Wurlitzer organ comes out of the stage and there's an organist that plays before every show. All kinds of things on the wall, including Christopher Columbus tucked away over here in the corner. But nothing is the same along this wall. All the statues are different. Nothing mimics itself. Nothing really repeats itself. There's all kinds of different things, including a random peacock sitting right there. But yes, they have them sectioned off. Look, three people can sit there. And then the banners divide into three other seats right there. And the same thing is replicated all the way down. As I was saying in the beginning of the video, I've been here several times, most of the time for movies. Uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show, Ghostbusters, Back to the Future, Troll 2, Jaws. I came here on the 40th anniversary of Jaws and the place sold out. There was a line down Franklin Street. It was amazing. And there it is. I hear the world. It's a... The organ's firing up. The organist is rising. And here we go, folks. Just what I was hoping. Just what I was hoping for. The organist. My 
Kokomo popcorn is ready. Order number 18. And as you can see, the theater is filling up. I was hoping it would fill up so much that they would have to open the balcony up, but I'm pretty sure that the amount of tickets sold was predetermined so they would know. My first bite of popcorn at the reopening of the Tampa Theater. Oh man, that's so good. There he goes. Bye! That's so awesome. It just disappears. Look at the setting of the sun there. There it goes. Wait. Bam, he's gone. He's so gone. Yeah, let's see. Oh, the spotlight's out. There we go. Good evening. Good evening. You all are far enough away. She's, she's pretty far away. My name is Jill Witecki, and it is my pleasure to welcome you all back to Tama's majestic movie palace. Yeah! Woo! A year ago tonight, one year ago tonight, I walked out on this stage and I welcomed a crowd for a sing-along screening of Jesus Christ Superstar. Someone was there. Like no time has passed. And we knew at that point that coronavirus was on the horizon. But we didn't quite know exactly what that was going to mean for Tampa Theater quite yet. Over the next 24 hours after that, we announced our closure. We canceled a sold-out show, among a lot of other things. And we had no idea how long this was going to last. As days turned into weeks, we furloughed our entire part-time team. All of our full-time folks were ordered to work from home. This majestic building that is used to hosting 700 showtimes a year sat empty. As weeks then stretched into months, though, kind of an amazing thing started to happen. The creative gears started to grind. Uh, greased by a, a resource that our little team doesn't always have a lot of time. With the help of our film producers, our film distributors, we started adding multiple movies a week to our virtual cinema. We talked to Stephen Ball, who you just saw. <laughs> there you go, good job, Stephen. Into driving down to Tampa from his home in St. Louis to live stream a silent movie with us online. That's awesome. We packed Beer Fest into boxes and sent it home with you. <laughs> we sold popcorn out by the curb. And every crazy idea we came up with, you, our community, stepped up and supported us in it. Woo! You know, we talk a lot around here about being a community-supported organization. Uh, we're a nonprofit. By definition, we rely on community support. But over the last year, it has become crystal clear to us exactly what that means. What it means is that longtime corporate sponsors, instead of pulling back those pledges in the midst of their own financial uh, uncertainties, instead they offered to support our virtual programming and events instead. It means that our neighbors and friends over at Beach Bank were the first ones in line to offer to sponsor our opening weekend. So thank you for being here. It means that our annual members, where are our annual members? <laughs> Those Patrons. of you who had no idea when your member benefits were going to be reinstated, went ahead and renewed your memberships anyway. Yeah. It means that brand new sponsors and donors found us in our darkest days and offered to help by sponsoring virtual programming, by donating to our Be The Light campaign, or like our new friends at the Live Well team of Tampa Bay Real Estate. Offered to sponsor these first two weekends with us. 
Uh, so as you heard, uh, Mary Jane and James Rickles, they are the Live Well team. They are here with us tonight. And their business model is inspirational. Uh, what they do is every time they sell a home, they donate a, a portion of their commission back to a local nonprofit that's chosen by the homeowner. And they work with lenders and other business partners who commit to do the same. So thank you to Mead Lewis and Autumn Brasher, who chose to stand. Along with their partner, Peggy Bradshaw of Van Dyke. not even begin to express how we feel about this. Uh, because of every company whose logo you saw up here in the pre-show uh, before I came out, because of every member and donor who wrote a check, because of every organization that offered a grant, because of every patron who bought a virtual cinema ticket or a bag of popcorn or a message on our marquee or one of the old red seats that we dragged out of the closet and oh, offered man. up for sale. Guess I'll get one of those? Because of all of you who just by virtue of being here tonight are now part of Tampa Theater history. Because of, damn it, I was not gonna cry during this. <laughs> oh. Because of all of you, there were a dozen of us that got to keep our jobs this year. Just a few moments, but we are exiting the Tampa Theater. Such a wonderful evening. Well, guys, the movie surprised me. I really enjoyed it. It was a bit different. Anthony Hopkins played an elderly man, the father. His name was actually Anthony in the movie. And it kind of puts you into his shoes, into the perspective and the mind of a man suffering of Alzheimer's. And without any spoilers, 
it was it was a very confusing movie to follow at first, but that was intentional. Again, so good to be back here at the reopening of the Tampa Theater, and from this day forward, I will enjoy coming back here as I used to, coming back here regularly for movies, especially the classic movies. I can't wait to see another classic movie inside those doors. But thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up right down there. I appreciate it. I am Tampa J. There's much ahead. This one's over, but there's going to be another video. It wouldn't be the same without you. Know you're awesome. Know you're loved. And know there's much ahead. Restrooms. Downstairs. Oh, yeah. Ladies' parlor, men's room.